Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Boxing Reviews and now too, and on today's video we'll be showing you how to add Wi-Fi 6E to your desktop PC. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at how to add Wi-Fi 6E, that new ratified standard for super fast internet on your PC. Now this has actually been sent to us by a name I struggle to pronounce, Z. Ziatod? I'm not too sure. We'll call it Z for sure. I think that works out best all around. Uh, there will be links for this in the video description. They haven't asked me to say anything in particular, but they just asked me to um, try it, see what I think of it, and uh, yeah, make a video on it and show you guys how to install it. So that is exactly what we're going to do. But first of all, we'll go through do a quick unboxing so you know exactly what you get in the box so you can be prepared and also get things ready for your PC. Now, obviously, this is a PCI Express card, so you will need a PCI Express times one slot available on your motherboard. That is one thing you definitely will have to have. Although, if you don't have one, there are other versions of similar cards to this also, which will be listed in the video description below. So maybe if you want to add a different type, like maybe a USB one or something like that, then there's going to be an option for most people. Also, we've done a few other videos in the past, so you can check those out up here. Anyway, let's get on with the unboxing. So this is the AX210S. So this is the new enhanced version. Essentially what they've done is with the Wi-Fi 6 band is they've added or expanded it, hence the E on the end of it, so to Wi-Fi 6E. Now this adds a new dimension to it. Basically we've added another bandwidth to it. So originally with Wi-Fi you've got 2.4 gigahertz, you've also got 5 gigahertz, and now we've addition of 6 gigahertz. So in practical terms, what does that mean to most people? Well actually it probably won't mean a great deal at the moment unless you have a router which is actually Wi-Fi 6E also. That is to get the absolute maximum speeds out of this, which are up to a whopping 2.4 gigabits per second, which is basically faster than most wired connections, which normally top out around about one gigabit. For us here, personally, we're using Virgin Media, and we're all actually on a lowly 400 megabit connection. So we'll be interested to see if this can actually max that out. And it should, in theory, be able to easily match that of my gigabit wired connection whilst in use. So anyway, let's go through the unboxing and see what we actually get. So first of all in the packaging, there are a pair of antenna. Now these are rated as 6 dB. Normally, most of the antennas you get on these kind of cards are normally somewhere about 3 to 5 dB, so 6 dB is a bit better. And actually they do feel quite sturdy. They do feel a little bit bigger and they actually measure a little bit bigger than the ones you're used to getting, especially those that are integrated into motherboards and that kind of thing. So definitely an upgrade already. Next up in the packaging, we have the actual card itself. So we'll take a, a very quick look at that now. So as you can see, this is in a PCI Express format. It uses a times one slot. It's actually a really nice design. You've got a M style design heatsink on there to keep the actual chipset itself cool. And also it, the PCB itself is all nicely blacked out. On the back actually, there is a signal strength meter, which is a uh, a slightly unusual addition. Not many people will be looking inside their PCs, but certainly if you have your PC on your desk next to you, you can just uh, glance over to the side and admire the LEDs. The back plate itself also is blacked out in this satin matte black finish, so that is going to tie with most modern builds these days, which is far nicer than having one of those plain chrome ones, which look a little bit naff these days. On the back of the chipset, there is actually a USB type connection on there, so that is for the included USB cable. This card, although it does a fantastic job for Wi-Fi 6E, it will also give you Bluetooth 5.2, which is the new Bluetooth version. Again, all of the things about this card are upgraded. So Bluetooth 5.2 promises to have better things like latency and all those kinds of things. And you're less likely to be dropping connections when using Bluetooth devices with your PC with this enhanced chipset. For those of you who are wondering about the connections, though these are just standard SMA connections, and to connect up the antenna, all you need to do is to just screw it onto the back of the card. Very simple to do. You can do this probably when you've installed it into the PC is probably your best bet. And then you can angle them accordingly. So yeah, very good, very simple. And those antenna do feel particularly sturdy. I do like that. You do find some are a little bit on the cheap side and feel like they're gonna snap off at any moment, but these actually feel pretty decent. So delving further into the box, we also get a half height PCI adapter. So if you're using this, so if you're using this in a small form factor build or a mini ITX PC, which only has the half-height slots, or perhaps you're using one of those Dell or HP units, which come in those really compact towers, then you can swap that over. Everything you need is actually included to do that. Next up is the USB cable. So we've got a USB 
header on there, which plugs into the USB header on your motherboard. Now this is only for the Bluetooth 5.2. If for some reason you don't want to have Bluetooth on your PC, you can simply not connect that and Bluetooth will not function on this device. Next up, there is an instruction guide, again from the uh, Z company. And it's actually a really nice instruction guide. It's got all color instructions and guidance, etc., etc. But to be honest with you, you won't need that. As long as you're using Windows 10 or Windows 11, then you should find this to be an absolute breeze and will be completely plug and play. Although if it isn't plug and play for any reason, then they do include a driver DVD or driver CD rather. So that has got the drivers for this particular card and others on it as well. So yeah, nice and easy to do if you've got an optical drive that is. Also included, there's a couple of spare screws in there for actually attaching the mini height bracket to the back of the card. And also conveniently, there's a little dinky screwdriver as well to aid you with that task. So that is pretty much it for what we get. Let's have it try and install it in the PC. And then we'll do some speed tests and we'll see if this is actually worth the money. Now talking of money, at the moment in the UK, these retail for somewhere in around the sort of 40 pounds mark. They do have sales quite frequently as well. So if maybe you're not plan on getting one of these immediately but possibly getting one in the near future then definitely bookmark the page on Amazon and then you'll be notified when the price drops happen. So anyway that's enough of that waffle let's get on with this and install it and see what it's actually like. Okay so the first thing we need to do is to remove a suitable PCI Express blanket plate from this back section here. So if you look at your PCI Express ports that you've got available now you can use a PCI Express times one slot which is what we've got here at the bottom. But if you want to as well, you can use the one just above it there. So that's a full length times 16 slot, but it will also work. So if you've got a times 16, a times four or a times one or a times eight slot, you can use it. But ideally try and use one which is not in use and away from the graphics card. If we wanted to use that one, which is next to the graphics card, that might be a little bit tight for the fans. So I would avoid using that. So try and use one lower down in the motherboard, which will be uh, beneficial and give you a bit more room to work with. So we're going to remove the corresponding PCI Express plate, which is this one here. So I'm just using a cross-headed screwdriver. I'm just going to loosen that off and remove the blanking plate and remove the screw in its entirety. So what we want to do next is to plug in our USB cable. Now, because of where it is in the PC, it's probably going to be easier to do it before you actually install it into the computer. So what you want to do is with this cable here, there's little lugs on the end and just match them up with the lugs on there. It's a little bit hard to see, but essentially the lugs should be towards the top of the car. So if I spin that around, so the little lugs are recessed into the top. And all we want to do is to push that in and give it a little wiggle until it's firmly seated. So that's the USB cable connected. The other end of the USB cable is going to plug into a regular USB header on your motherboard. Right, so now we can put the card actually into the PC. So pretty much the same as any of the PCI devices. So you just line up on the back there, line up with your PCI Express port and gently push it into position. And it should kind of snap into place. Then all you need to do is to replace the screw from the back. Just make sure that's in firmly. Try pressing the card just to make sure it doesn't wiggle or anything. Make sure it's firmly into the slot. And the next part of the job is the final piece, which is the USB header connection, which has got that traditional nine pin connection, which is gonna plug into our motherboard. So on this particular motherboard, we've got a USB header, which is down in this bottom section in between the existing USB 2 connection and also our USB 3.0 connection. So let's go ahead and plug that onto there. And that's that cable in place. Now, obviously in your own PC, you can go ahead and cable manage the cable however you see fit. I'm just going to tuck it down underneath the board for now. In actual fact that's pretty tidy. So essentially that is it. All we need to do now obviously the PCI Express bracket we've removed from our PC. Probably a good idea to put that into your motherboard box or something for safekeeping. I'm going to plug my graphics card back in because I've unplugged that to get a slightly better angle on the card. Other than that it's just a matter of screwing those antenna into the back of the PCI Express card and turning the PC back on. Okay, so there we go, very easy to do, very straightforward, doesn't require a tremendous amount of dexterity, although some glasses may be necessary to find those USB headers. But other than that, very straightforward, very, very quick and easy to do. And I've got to be honest with you, the speeds are incredible. I wasn't expecting it to be quite as good as it is. So we've done a few speed tests on the internet speed test, which you, you can try out for yourself and actually to see if this is likely to improve your own connection. Now, one thing I should mention as well, personally here, 
Our Virgin Media router is the slightly older Super Hub, which doesn't actually support Wi-Fi 6E. I don't even think it supports Wi-Fi 6, to be completely honest with you. So we're going to have a great deal of difficulty actually saturating the bandwidth on this particular card. But we have been told that Virgin Media are going to be rolling out their new Super Hub 5 in the coming weeks and months. So hopefully when that happens, we'll try and update the video and see what the actual performance is like. Although probably we are still going to be capped pretty much by our 400 megabit connection. But anyway, speaking of our 400 megabit connection, so I did first of all a test, just a standard test, to see what it was like on our wired connection. And as you can probably see from some of the results on screen, we were getting somewhere in the region 370, 380 megabits per second, which is actually pretty decent in pretty much what we would expect on a 400 megabit connection, especially being that it's wired through gigabit ethernet, gigabit switches, etc. What was really interesting though is when we actually removed the LAN cable and then installed the card, and then run another test, and uh, I was actually quite surprised. So we actually got uh, very similar results, maybe of about 30 or 40 megabytes per second off, but still way over the 300 megabit per second ratings, which, yeah, is fantastic. I don't think I've had a Wi-Fi card before actually get anywhere near that. And actually, one thing I did try after was just to plug in one of those kind of relatively generic, cheapo Wi-Fi adapters that are on the USB card, and plugged that in and gave that a test. And that was struggling to get in the region of about 120 megabits per second. So we're getting somewhere in the region of about three times the speed that you'd get from a traditional USB plug-in adapter, which actually for me is uh, pretty groundbreaking. And the fact that we can actually now use a wireless connection in the house, in this room, generally. I've said it before and I'll say it again, this room is awful for Wi-Fi. It is absolutely horrendous. It's possibly the worst room in the entire house, apart from possibly our daughter's room, which is upstairs, which has got a router in, ironically. But anyway, I digress. But yeah, this room is generally pretty awful for when it comes to Wi-Fi. So to get the basically the entire speed that we're paying for from Wi-Fi from our Virgin Media router, well, colour me impressed. I'm very, very happy. And I think, to be honest with you, if I was planning to maybe move the PC to somewhere else in the house, a bit further away, or another room where there wasn't a wired connection and I had to use a Wi-Fi connection, I don't think I'll have any problems at all recommending getting this Wi-Fi card. It does appear to do exactly what it says on the tin. So let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. Are you using Wi-Fi? Also, do me a favour. Test your Wi-Fi speeds on your existing setup. Let us know in the comments what your incoming broadband speed is in megabits per second. And then tell us what you're getting on your Wi-Fi reception. And maybe if you're trying it on a few devices, hey, list a few of them on there. It's very interesting to see what kind of speeds you guys are getting out of your routers at home. So anyway, that's going to wrap this one up. Thanks very much to uh, yeah, the company that I've struggled to pronounce for sending us for review purposes. Hopefully there's more to come. So, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the comments section. Thanks for watching.